Hate speech against the media, journalists behind bars, critical journalists murdered. I'm speaking with Christian Mir, head of Germany's Bureau of Reporters Without Borders, about the freedom of press in Europe. Mr. Mir, Turkey has jailed over 30 journalists. You were there several times to observe the trials. Do you still dare go? Yes. Last year, when tensions between Germany and Turkey had reached their peak, there was indeed a time when I cancelled a trip because I was seriously worried something would happen to me. But in the meantime, I feel safer about traveling there. German-Turkish relations have relaxed. The situation for Turkish journalists, however, certainly has not. Let's stay with the relations between Germany and Turkey. Do you think things changed after Denis Yücel was released? I would say tensions between Germany and Turkey have relaxed somewhat. I don't think things have improved substantially, but from Germany's perspective, I believe German-Turkish relations are currently searching for ways to approach one another. But in Turkey, nothing has really changed. Circumstances for Turkish journalists remain difficult. Many journalists are still in prison. I have observed a number of absurd trials. As reports without borders, we continue to provide a lot of emergency aid as part of our support work. Denis Ejel's release was, in short, actually just a symbolic gesture by Turkey to Germany. That means if Turkish journalists make critical comments about Erdogan, they already have set one foot in jail. Yes, the problem is that the exact definition of what is seen as critical criticism of Erdogan can change daily. But that's the risk all journalists in Turkey are exposed to, and every Turkish editorial bureau has desks that belong to colleagues who are now in jail. Because of the current situation there and critical reporting is being suppressed, DW wants to start a Turkish TV channel. Is that a good idea? I think it's a great idea, because Turkish television is lacking options. And we know that in Turkey, like anywhere else, television is the medium that reaches the most people. We also know that other media produced by exiled journalists in Germany are in demand in Turkey. So I was very pleased when DW announced this, because I think it can really fill a much-needed gap. In Turkey, journalists are in jail. In Slovakia, investigative journalist Jan Kuciak was murdered. What information do you have on the circumstances? What we know about Jan Kuciak's murder is that there was a climate in Slovakia that made that even possible. What we also know, and this is the real scandal, is that government circles in the immediate vicinity of the then Prime Minister Robert Fico apparently had contacts and dealings with the Mafia. From what we know so far, the Mafia was behind the murder. It's scandalous enough to know government circles have links to criminal groups. We also know that the then Prime Minister Robert Fico used to personally defame journalists. That was the environment that had been created and that is actually the biggest scandal. That this is happening in an EU country and the EU isn't doing much about it. There's a second case, the murder of journalist Daphne Galizia in Malta. Do you see similarities? Yes, there are a lot of similarities, because there too, just like in Slovakia, there were connections all the way up to the government that at least knew contact people who were behind the alleged killers. The alleged killers are currently on trial and it appears some of the accused allegedly had contacts to the highest government circles until shortly before the murder. At the same time, the Maltese Prime Minister had repeatedly made derogatory statements about Daphne Caruana Galizia. So there is a parallel at this level, and another, politically speaking, is the fact that the EU is responding just as helplessly as it is to Slovakia. It's describing the problems very generally, but not really naming those responsible. In the end, that is what exercises influence. 
Just for clarity, because people often lament things important to them. You have a very personal relationship to South America. You studied in Chile, lived and worked in Ecuador. How are working conditions for journalists in South America compared to Europe? South or Latin America is a very diverse continent. But what we can observe in several Latin American countries is that journalists are murdered on a daily basis. Take Mexico or Brazil or Colombia. There are parts of these countries where the state, as the regulating or governing power, has de facto retreated, while private forces such as drug cartels and criminal groups have taken over power. Here, the state no longer has any relevance, and that means that the existing protection programs by the state don't work in Colombia or in Mexico, because some of these states are corrupt to their core. I observed that myself recently on my last trip to Mexico. Germany is far removed from such circumstances. It's one of the freest countries on earth. So why do you rank Germany 15th in terms of freedom of the press? What we criticize in Germany, the fact that print diversity is dwindling, could be considered a luxury problem compared to Mexico or Colombia. Increasingly in Germany, there is just one local newspaper left, but media diversity is essential for the freedom of the press. Another thing we criticize in Germany is the repeated violence in some places. In the Ruhr Valley, there are several regions where journalists reporting on neo-Nazi activity can only work with police protection. The same goes for journalists reporting at AFD or Pegida rallies. A third issue important to us is the mass surveillance by German intelligence services like BND, who willingly take into account the infringement of protecting journalist sources. But you could still expect to find Germany in 5th or 12th or 16th place even, like last year. How objective is your ranking? It isn't. Our ranking is radically subjective. We can say that because we don't do the ranking as an organization here in Berlin. We have people across the globe who do it. Five to ten people in each country make the assessment and of course it always depends on their personal views. But we still try to apply a method which makes it as scientific as possible. But people are subjective, and this ranking does not claim to describe scientifically freedom of the press. Instead, it's aimed to provoke thought and encourage countries to improve things. The reason I ask is that credibility is a major problem for journalists right now. 57% of journalists think this is actually the biggest problem, and media experts say that German reporters were not critical enough when reporting on the refugee crisis. Is that a fair accusation? I think there are at least structural factors in German media that might have a certain undifferentiated view on certain topics. I think the answer why that is, is complex. One point definitely is, there are studies that show that the majority of German journalists have a leftist, liberal, political orientation. They all look through the same lens. Look through the same lens. That isn't an opinion, but an empirical observation. Of course, people's value judgments influence the way they see the world. The second point is that the majority of journalists are not migrants. And in a society based upon immigration, that means certain perspectives are missing. Are the accusations of fake news and press lies just the derailed exaggeration of the feeling many people share that during the refugee crisis there was little space to criticize the political directive? Despite all the points I just criticized that are present in every society, I think the insecurity sits deeper in German journalism, because its fake news criticism has a certain volume that's amplified by echo chambers like Facebook. At the same time, what is interesting when you take an international view is that a certain skepticism towards media can be a proof of a sound democracy. So some journalists see themselves as supporters of the state. I think to a certain degree some journalists are afraid to take a different stance on certain topics. 
I think you can say that. But I wouldn't say that is explicitly meant to be in support of the government. But that's exactly why I think it's important for journalists to change their position from time to time and see other perspectives, whether abroad or at home, instead of only working as a political journalist in central Berlin. We're standing right now on the rooftop of your organization. What role do you see for yourself and your organization? One thing that has changed a lot at Reporters Without Borders is that we indeed have more work to do in Europe, because we've noticed that freedom of the press has been deteriorating in Europe. So it's increasingly up to us to take a clear stance here. Luckily, we don't have to provide real aid in EU countries. Another thing that has changed our work a lot and where there's much to do is the topic of mass surveillance. We need to be present and provide more information on how people can protect themselves. We think there is a global megatrend of digital mass surveillance in the fight against terrorism. Mr. Mir, we've reached our final three questions. Please complete these sentences. The freedom of the press is no longer a matter of course in Europe because... Because the EU isn't exerting hard pressure on many countries. Without the brave work by many journalists, the world would be worse off because journalists spread knowledge in order to discuss problems in society and achieve progress in society. And when the freedom of opinion and the press is threatened? I think any democracy dies. I believe, to put it dramatically, that the freedom of opinion and the press is the mother of other human rights. Christian Mir, thank you for joining us. You're welcome.